Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Null Inc. third quarter 2020 question and answer session. This call is being recorded. This call is also being webcast. In addition, this call may offer statements that are forward-looking, including without limitation statements regarding Null's long-term revenue and profitability growth goals, future outlook for the industry and economy, ability to integrate acquired businesses, and expectations with respect to future leverage. These forward-looking statements are based largely on the company's current expectations, but are subject to a number of risks and uncertainties, certain of which are beyond the company's control. Actual results may differ materially from forward-looking statements as a result of many factors, including the factors and risks identified and described in NOLF's annual report on Form 10-K and its other filings in the Securities and Exchange Commission. These cautionary statements are particularly relevant in the current environment where the COVID-19 pandemic has created significant uncertainty. All of our forward-looking statements today should be considered within the context of that uncertainty. The call today may also include references to non-GAAP financial measures. Reconciliation of these measures to the most comparable GAAP financial measures are included in the earnings letters released earlier today. I will now turn the call over to Mr. Andrew Kogan, the Chairman and CEO of NAL, for the opening remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We hope this finds you and yours safe and well. Today, we announced solid financial results for the third quarter as our e-commerce business grew 434% compared to the prior year and higher margin for residential sales comprising approximately a third of our business up dramatically from a fifth a year ago, grew a total of 39%. Nolink sales of $309 million declined 13% in the third quarter, driven primarily by a decline in office sales of approximately 25%. Total shipments during the quarter benefited from elevated backlog levels heading into the period, and we are pleased that we saw a sequential improvement in incoming order activity from the very depressed levels we experienced in the second quarter. Nonetheless, orders are still tracking below current shipment levels. With the false starts and delayed return to the workplace for most of our corporate clients, we continue to see a significant number of new office projects being delayed, even in cases where the buildings have been completed and we've been awarded the furnishings. Over the long term, no doubt, the office will remain an indispensable part of the workplace ecosystem, and we should see a nice bump when businesses do return to the office. But that landscape will be a synthesis that includes a more permanent work-from-home component in an overall environment that continues to elevate the importance of a well-designed home. The workplace itself will more likely be a we space than a me space, as at the crux it becomes a space for collaboration, both in person and with colleagues working remotely. The pressure to create workplaces that draw workers in will only increase as the options of where people can work also grows. All this bodes well for a design-driven brand like Knoll with a robust collaborative and ancillary product capabilities. Let me add that we are particularly proud of the results we have reported and the strategies that will guide us forward. There may be those who are daunted by the challenges posed by the pandemic, particularly in the office space, but we believe, if anything, the pandemic has helped to accelerate the long-term trends that we are already, already building a Knoll to take head on. Now we just have to keep pivoting harder and faster but the opportunity is there, the pieces are in place, and we can see the excitement in our teams. We're happy now to take your questions. As a reminder to ask a question, you will need to press star one on your telephone. And to withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Our first question comes from the line of Greg Burns from Sidodi and Company. Your line is now open. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to uh, first get into the uh, order patterns in, in terms of workplace. Could you just maybe um, give us some more quantitative numbers around how, how much order orders were down in the third quarter, uh, maybe relative to the, the second quarter, and how they've trended in the first part of the uh, the fourth quarter? Well, hey, Greg, uh, good to hear from you. Um, listen, we saw a really nice sequential improvement from Q2 into Q3 in our overall order patterns. You know, when you look at the, the BIFMA data, I think over the last 
three, four, five months, the industry is down around 32, 33% on the workplace side. And we've done, you know, nicely better than that. I think for us, the crux is a little bit less what's happening in the workplace part, but what's happening in all the other channels and the, all the other ways people are working. And there, as you can see from our, you know, what we talked about today, we saw really solid growth in our work from home business, in our e-commerce business, and in our residential businesses. And now, today, that's, you know, 30% and growing of our mix. Um, well, we expect the workplace to continue to be challenged. You know, as we talked about in the, in the commentary we shared with our earnings release, we think, you know, you're probably looking at 30 to 40% decline in BIFMA demand over the, you know, 2021 period, you know, bottoming somewhere in 22 and then starting to turn up. But again, you know, we're, we're pleased to see our orders declining less than, than the industry at this point. Okay, and I guess that that view around the you know, in your in the uh, the press release around the the, the Bifma market shrinking twenty percent and kind of this view for the third year to forty percent decline over the next I guess you know few quarters at least um, is that shaped by any change in kind of conversations you're having with your customers what you're seeing or is it just you know recovery taking longer or maybe have things gotten any incrementally worse over the last You'll no, actually, I think things have gotten uh, incrementally better, particularly in terms of our mix of business. Again, I, I think we, you know, when we were talking in the last call, we were talking about maybe 20% shipment declines in the back half, and you can see, you know, we did better in the in the third quarter. So I think our view actually has improved. But I think, you know, in part it's improved because, again, the mix of our business is substantively different at this point than – someone who would be 100% workplace-oriented. And we think it's important that, you know, as people start looking at the space, they start to differentiate, um, you know, where everyone is kind of positioned. I, you know, I think as we look at the, at the industry, to me, this feels a lot like the 2001 to 2004 decline. I mean, you look at, you know, the sublease levels right now, they're above the dot-com levels. You look at the kind of absorption you know, it reminds me of, 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 of those periods. You look at the kind of leasing activity, which is much more renewal than new space oriented. So I, I could easily see a market that's down, you know, again, the BIFMA stuff's tracking down 30 this year, maybe another 10 next year. And then you start to get some stabilization and improvement. So, no, I don't think our, our view has changed at all. I mean, you know, our pipeline is not down as badly as, you know, the BIFMA data number one. But what we are seeing is the incoming opportunities are tra the number of incoming opportunities are kind of consistent with that that decline in Bifma. So you know I, I just think that's the reality. And the the key for us is that the more people and the longer people are staying at home, that bodes really well for the pivot to work from home that we are really well you know uh, positioned to take advantage of and to benefit not only from the e-commerce piece of it. Um, on the work from home piece, but on the on the living at home piece. So again, I think that's going to be what differentiates us through this cycle. But pure play Bisma, we, we think is down thirty or forty percent over the next two years. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about I guess that e-commerce then a little bit. Um, the the um, you know very strong growth through this quarter. I know last last quarter you had talked about. Uh, maybe some some supply or inventory constraints. Did that affect you at all this quarter? Has that been all cleaned up? And you know, I, I know it, it was restricting some of your investment around marketing dollars there because you didn't have the the inventory to support the demand. So are we all caught up there? And are you ready to really step on the gas a little bit on that side of the business? Uh, yeah, we're we're all caught up there, which which is great. We'll be stepping up on the marketing side, particularly as you head into like you know. Cyber Monday and Black Friday and all the holidays and in November and December. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We've expanded the offering, um, you know, both on the fully side of things, um, and they're and they're really well positioned. But we're also expanding it in two other ways. One globally, um, we actually have a really nice um, and and fast growing work from home position in Europe. So it's not just a a North American phenomenon. And then, and then on the second side, the whole Noel plus Mudo work from home, which we really launched, you know, in the middle of, you know, July, um, 
that's really gaining momentum, and uh, you know we're pleased with how that's going. So it's not a, it's not just uh, you know on a fully front, it's a more multifaceted and and increasingly global effort that we're really pleased with. And, and I, I would just point out that that channel in general is about twice as profitable as the kind of traditional office channel. So you don't need a dollar for dollar transition to capture you know some some good margin stuff. So again. You know, there'll still be headwinds going through this year into next, but I, I think we're, we're encouraged that from a profitability mix standpoint, ultimately that will be more helpful. Okay, and then, you know, obviously, you know, 400 plus percent growth this quarter. Could you give us maybe a sense of your, your you know, maybe, maybe that was a little bit of a catch up from last quarter, some of the comp- supply constraints, but could you give us a sense of maybe the order patterns there or what, what kind of growth maybe you're still expecting from that channel over the next? quarter or two? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, again, I, I think the, the important thing is today residential, which includes work from home and, you know, living at home, is about 30% of our sales. It was 20% a year ago. So I think you'll continue to see our mix, you know, move maybe more two-thirds, one-third. You know, I think you'll see 60-40. You'll see more evolution of that, number one. Then in terms of the, the growth rates, I would continue to expect to see that business double over the next couple of quarters, and then we'll grow 400%, but you know, I'd be happy with 100, 150% growth as we continue to move forward there. We're certainly seeing it in the, in the traffic and the conversion rates and, and all that kind of data. We're seeing in encouraging trends. And we have a lot more products and, again, marketing effort, you know, coming into that space uh, in the fourth quarter, and I imagine we'll carry over into next year. Okay, and maybe we can get Charles in here. Um, I just had a question about the the um, uh, the, re- the restructuring uh, you announced, the twenty three million of savings. Um, how how should we expect that to be kind of um, realized over the next couple of quarters? And is that a net number, or do you plan on reinvesting some of that um, you know back into the business? Yeah. Hey, Greg. Thanks. Um, so. Um, you know, as we announced, um, you know, we, we've got about 23 million of annualized savings. Um, so we would expect it to be generally spread, you know, over the course of the year, you know, fairly evenly. Um, you know, we, we have some actions ranging, you know, from, uh, you know, headcount reduction to, you know, some future actions with a few, um, you know, facility closures, et cetera. Um, but that's, uh, that's generally a net number. Um, there might be some additional uh, spend around, you know, marketing dollars and things like that. But uh, uh, generally speaking, that's a, um, you know, a, a net number. And then, you know, against that, you've got a couple of things coming back next year in terms of incentives, um, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of things. Um, in addition to that, uh, we got some one-time benefits this year uh, from some of the, the, the government uh, programs that were going on. Um, so those will return next year. Um, but generally speaking, um, you know, we've, we've taken out about $60 million out of the business, uh, going into, um, you know, going into 2021. Um, and so there's, you know, a, a little bit coming back next year, as I mentioned. Um, and the restru- from the restructuring actions, you know, it's about 50 million of total savings coming from that, um, split about 50-50 between COGS and OPEX. Um, but basically it's, setting us up nicely going into next year um, to, to achieve, you know, bottom line results of, you know, uh, higher single level uh, margins and EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA, uh, maybe maybe lower double digit. Okay, so so with with the, the restructuring that still keeps you I guess in line with that twenty to twenty five to thirty percent range incremental margin kind of model. That's how we should think yeah. about it still. Yeah, I think that's right. So, so as we finish this year, you know, we're expecting still 25 to 30% deleveraging of EBITDA. Um, um, but um, I, th- I think you're right. We're hoping to get some expansion next year. But but still, um, you know, still as we go into next year, you know, ha- expecting to get upper single digits of EBITDA, lower double digits. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Eva. Thanks, your next question comes from the line of Stephen Ramsey from Thompson Research Group. Your line is now open. Hey, good evening. Um, I guess to start on the uh, more, more uh, digging on e-commerce, can, can you maybe share, um, maybe to make sure I understand for this quarter, the Resi versus Workplace 
sales from e-commerce in Q3, and then thinking longer term as you move towards that 200 million of e-commerce sales, I guess is there a time frame on hitting the 200 million mark? And and as you get to that number, do you envision that having more resi content than workplace? Um, and with that, maybe you can can dig in on the the driver of, for better margins in that segment being residential versus workplace or any other factors that drive that. Sure. Let me uh, let me try and start at that. Um, so of the of the residential business, which again I said was about you know a third of our thirty percent of our sales in the quarter, um, about a third of that third was uh, e-commerce related. So that's kind of how. So two thirds, kind of bricks and mortar, um, our our Null Studio, our Holly Hunt, um, and, and Null Studio had a had a strong quarter. Mudo had you know had a quarter of growth. Um, so I'm pleased to see that, that Mudo is back to growth, Studio is back to growth. Um, and that goes through, you know, multiple channels. It goes through, you know, dealers, you know, uh, residential dealers. It goes through e-tailers and retailers in North America and in Europe. And then um, you have the kind of Holly Hunt business, which we also saw as you move through the quarter, nice growth. I mean, people clearly are spending more money on their homes. Um, you know, everyone's kind of cooped up a little bit more, so you, you see things you, you need to improve. I, we, we believe residential furnishings have really moved up the discretionary ladder in terms of people maybe aren't traveling as much, aren't going out as much, aren't spending as much on entertainment, and so they're spending more in their homes. So we're really a beneficiary of that, whether it's Mudo, whether it's Null Studio, and whether it's Holly Hunt. And it was encouraging to see even the trends at Holly Hunt as we move through the quarter, that business now as we enter the fourth, get back on a path to growth again. So I think that's encouraging. So that's two-thirds of the business. The other one-third is really more the e-commerce work-from-home business. Um, so, you know, again, if you take those ratios, you're thinking, you know, you know something in the three $400 million of our revenue is annually on a residential basis. And then you can say a third of that is e-commerce. And, and I do believe we can take that third and grow it 50 percent, you know, next year, and you know, 100 percent over the next two years. I, I think we're benefiting both from when we look at our market projections. We believe the work from home market will will double in size, and we believe it's going to be a. It's not just a trend, but it's a more permanent feature of you know, as we were talking about, kind of the ecosystem of how people will be working. And you know, you read all the all the stuff, I'm sure you're reading all the stuff we're reading, you know, it looks like, you know, 15, 20, 25% of folks are going to spend some time working at home, and I think people have enjoyed to some extent the flexibility that, that it offers them. And so we think that's, a, you know, whether it's learning from home, working from home, that, that will drive a, a sustainable growth in that part of the market. And, you know, we have both a digitally native and then a business we're kind of from the ground up building. So... You know, I think we're particularly well positioned uh, with multiple channels and a, and a broad range of products that we can really omni-channel market and move through multiple channels, you know, work in the office. Then we can repurpose those to, to work from home. And I'll give you one example. You know, one of our best-selling shares is our regeneration share. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a well-priced chair, and it, 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 it does great in, 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 in work in office. But it, it does great and work from home, and now we'll be introducing some more residential-oriented colors of those products. Um, we've got a broad range of, of tops and things that we do on the workplace side. We can now offer those on the residential side. So I think we're, you know, really nicely positioned to benefit kind of however this, this ultimately plays out. Did that, did that give you a even? No, that, yeah, that, that is helpful, um, I'm certainly... Um, and, and I guess to, to get more color there on the on the margin improvement uh, being or the, the margins being better through ecom yeah. um, than traditional workplace is yeah. is that because of more resi content in that or it, are there other drivers that that cause that margin improvement? Well, I, I think I think that the, the crux of it is you're selling you know one of this or one of that. And you're not discounting it like you're selling, you know, a, a five million dollar project. So I think, you know, it, it's primarily in the pricing where you get the, 
advantage. I mean, there's some disadvantages because the transportation is a little more expensive and things like that, but, but overall it's just higher margin business. And, you know, on the adjusted EBRA line, as Charles was talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's well above our targeted, you know, upper single, low double digit EBITDA margins in that piece of the business. Great. That, uh, okay. That makes sense. On, on your discussions with customers um, on delays uh, for spending for offices, can, can you maybe share more on, on the tone of those conversations? Are they, are they getting better or worse? And um, is there any meaningful change from uh, the second quarter uh, in these conversations? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think it's pretty obvious, but I mean, with the pandemic raging, um, people are delaying their return to work. And I, I think ultimately it's going to take a, a vaccine, you know, easier access to testing, um, and then you'll see more people return to work. There's, there's some good uh, data that we look at in terms of, you know, various uh, return to work barometers and things like that where people track. And I think if you look at the top 10 cities right now, at most 25, 26% of folks have returned to work. And when you look at it by geography, you know, the, you know, the Chicago, you know, uh, I mean, the, the kind of the areas, you know, the Chicago, San Francisco, D.C., those are some of the worst areas. New York is, is, is below the 27% average. You've got a few areas maybe in Texas that are above it. But, but in general, I, I think until people start returning to work in mass, we won't see meaningful improvement in the kind of industry run rate. Um, and, and I think that's the we're hearing. I mean, we've got, you know, I don't know, 70, 80 million dollars of awarded business right now that's kind of on hold pending people return to work. And so, you know, our, our best guess now is that sometime in the back half of next year, um, you'll start to see an acceleration of folks returning to work, and we should see a nice bump from that. But I think until then, it's going to be leaning into work from home. It's going to be, um, you know, driving the residential businesses because we're all going to be at home and we're going to be spending more money on our homes. And uh, that, that's where I think the action is going to be for the next 12 months. Great. And then last one um, for me, focusing more on specifically the government vertical, since that's a stronger vertical for you guys. Can you talk about uh, the performance in this market? diverging from general commercial office uh, office space? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the federal government's been stronger, but the state and local has been weaker. So um, I think they've kind of washed each other out um, in general. Um, but clearly the combined government thing's been been stronger than, than the corporate piece. You know, you know, I also think we were, you know, maybe expecting a little more quickly on the corporate side, a focus on return to work enhancements. So, you know, we've done a lot of work on screens and, and space division and, and new ways of laying things out. But even in that area where we've got, you know, all those products and we're really having active conversations with clients, even in that area, I, I think their, their attitude is, well, we're not going to race to do that till we get some more confidence about when we can bring people back to work. And, and so, again, I think that's probably a few quarters out. Gotcha. Thank you. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We don't have any more questions on queue. I will turn the call back to Mr. Andrew Kogan for the closing remarks. Well, thank you all again for your continued interest in Noel. Stay safe and go vote. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.